So here I am getting busted. The sequel. So here I am getting busted. The sequel. It's April the 16th, 1976, and it's Good Friday morning at 6 a.m. I am awakened by a police officer standing on the threshold of my bedroom. He said, Are you John Green? Last names have been changed to protect the innocent. I said, Yes. He said, We have a search warrant to search your house. Get up and get dressed. Holy asterisk repeated four times. I was being raided at 6 o'clock in the morning on Good Friday. The cop watched me get dressed then escorted me out of my bedroom, then into the living room. There were seven cops going through my house. Two Royal Canadian Mounted Police, RCMP for short. Two York Regional Police plainclothes narcotics detectives and three uniformed officers. In the 1970s it was very serious and very scary to have your house torn apart and searched by the cops. I was a marijuana dealer. For about a year I had been selling weed between 5 and 10 pounds a week. I sold it mainly by the pound but would regularly break up a pound into smaller amounts, into ounces and sell them individually for $20 each. I had a reputation of selling pot and was well known as a dealer with good deals. It was just a matter of time until I got raided. Getting busted and charged with possession of marijuana usually resulted in a fine, and a conditional discharge. Getting busted for trafficking was completely different. Trafficking marijuana was a much more serious charge. I had heard of people who had been charged with trafficking marijuana receiving large fines, and often jail time. I had better have my wits about me. This was serious stuff. I had four ounces of weed individually wrapped in bags in my shaving kit, in my bedroom. There was no doubt they would find them. Four ounces wrapped individually would open me up to a trafficking marijuana charge. In the living room the head of the operation introduced himself to me. His name was Mike, and he was an RCMP narcotics officer. His squad was known as the Horsemen. Mike stayed with me while the rest of the police searched my house. I knew it was a matter of time until they found my stash. The way I saw it was, my job was to sell pot, and their job was to stop me. There was nothing personal in it. Mike was a professional he was respectful and courteous. He didn't treat me badly. At that time he didn't have anything on me, yet, I answered his questions and tried to be a nice guy. No point in being an asshole, it would only come back on me in the end. I had a 50 gallon aquarium in the living room, there were two large red Oscars in the tank. The easiest way to give you an idea what they looked like, would be to describe them as bass, but very fancy tropical bass, they were both about 8 or 9 inches long. I asked Mike if it would be okay if I fed my fish. He said no problem, go ahead. He watched me as I went to the tank and picked up the small container of fish food. I opened the container and pinched out some flakes between my thumb and forefinger. I then held the fish food a couple of inches over the surface of the water in the fish tank. One of the Oscars swam right up, stuck its face out of the water and took the food right out of my fingers. That is the way we fed the Oscars every day. Mike was amazed. He said can you do that again? I said sure and did it again. Mike was amazed for a second time and called his buddies into the living room. He said to all the other cops, come in here for a minute. Check this out. They all came into the living room. The search of my house came to a complete halt. Mike said to them, watch this. And I fed the fish again. This time all seven of the cops were amazed. I continued feeding the fish and giving the cops a little education on Oscars at the same time. I was showing them that I was a good guy. I was trying to build a good rapport. No need to go hard on me. Soon the fun was over. And the cops got back to business. Not long after that I was escorted back to my bedroom. Where they pointed out the 4 ounces of weed nicely packed into my shaving kit. They asked me what is this? I told them marijuana. Mike said you're under arrest and escorted me back into the living room. Mike asked me who owned the marijuana. He wanted me to claim it so he could charge me with trafficking. I told him four people live in this house and we each own one bag. But this week is my wit to claim it as mine. He said, you can't say that. I said yes, I can. And repeated the same story. Four people live here, we each own one bag, and it is my wit to take possession of it. Mike said, but you can't say that. I said, can I say anything I want in my statement? Mike said yes you can. So, I said to Mike again, four people live in this house, 
We all own one bag but it's my wit to take possession of it. And that became my statement. I was given a charge of possession of marijuana, not a charge of trafficking. As a result, I received a summons to appear in court. A few weeks later I appeared in court and received another conditional discharge and another $50 fine. I wonder if feeding my fish helped me out that day. I think so. Here is an interesting fact that I had learned before the raid on my house. The topic of cops confiscating drug paraphernalia came up during a discussion with friends one day. One of my friends pointed at my ultra-modern triple beam balance scales. At the time triple beam balance scales were the leading edge of technology. This was long before the introduction of electronic scales. He told me those would be considered drug paraphernalia and would be confiscated. Except if you were a collector. If you collected scales your triple beam balance would become a part of a collection and no longer considered drug paraphernalia. So, I thought to myself what the heck, and found a couple of old crappy scales at a flea market and bought them. They were junk, but now I had a collection. I had all three scales on display on the mantelpiece. The two old crappy pieces of junk in my ultra-modern triple beam balance. During the drug raid the police tried to confiscate my triple beams. I said you can't take those. Mike asked, why not? I told him, I'm a collector, they are part of my collection. In the end, what I have been told was true. The police couldn't take them because they were part of a collection and no longer considered drug paraphernalia. True.